Hello, all you hardcores out there. How are we doing? It's Rusty from Porky's Corner, the biggest gob in sport. We say the things on here that nobody dare say. Isn't that right? Andy from Aberdeen, or is it Perth? <laughs> Perth tonight. How you doing, lad? <laughs> Not got the same ring at though, is it? Perth, Andy. Yeah. Andy from Aberdeen is a bit like Roger from Roehampton. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit like you get Aberdeen Angus beef, don't you? Steak beef, so... Oh, yeah, Aberdeen Angus. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not bad yourself. I'm all right, like, you know, I get by, don't I, kid? I'm, uh, no good, yeah. I'm plodding on. Let's see. Uh, you've been out running today? Hey? You've been out running today? Yeah, this morning, yeah. All right. I was like a shot dog running through Brown Hills. <laughs> mornings when you just don't fancy it. I just didn't fancy it this morning. Uh, you get days like that, eh? Some some days it's not happening, eh? Other days it's... You can go all, run all day, so I think, yeah. Well, maybe not quite all day, but yeah. eh, some days it's easier than others, eh? Yeah, it's a stop start. I'm 54 next month, so I'm knocking on a bit now. My joints are knackered. Then, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a pair of these shoes I've still on your Yeah, I'm just on about them. Them, uh, them ASICs that you sent me a picture of. Frotch wears them, you know, ASICs. And uh, I think Kent wears them as well. He's into all that. Carry on. Yeah. Are they all I've, right? uh, I've always... I think I started off... I only started running when I was about 28. Uh, yeah. Could never run at school. But um, the first time running shoes I got was Adidas. Because I always liked Adidas shoes. But... Uh, I can't remember who it was that told me to try Astics and I bought a pair of them and I thought sort of, I've worn them ever since run them wise, I had a pair of uh, high tech silver shadow, you know them old schools that uh, SAS, <laughs> SAS uh, when you go for AS, SAS training, they wear them, don't they? So uh, I thought if they're good enough for SAS, they're good enough for me. I was only a young gun when I used to wear them as a kid, but I thought they were bang on, but the deer is out to buy now. They do them in black though, don't they now, instead of just silver, don't they? Uh, Black oh, shadows, eh? Hey, black shadows. Well, no, no, oh, you'll get me done saying that on here, mate. With all this boat <laughs> carry on, like oh, I care right. anyway. Pop, pop. <laughs> I had silver shadows at school, and then I got a fancy pair of trainers. Was it Diodoras or like bright yellow with red piping and that? And that. They, were, yeah. they were a bit out there at the time, you know. <laughs> this knobhead who I don't like, give me this to try. Have you heard of it? What's that? Strawberry. Screaming Devil XF, yeah, never heard. Probably poison, trying to poison me or something. But I'm going to try it mm. now. now that I'm a, now that I'm a, a dossa. Careful with that. <laughs> it's like an alcopop man. It's not in my league. But not. For me. <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was going to say now. Do you know what? I'm going to talk about Christopher Eubank Jr. tonight, right? <clears throat> I've seen yep. an interview he's done. He's calling out Saunders. Oh, we've uh, uh, Canelo, Conor Ben, and Crawford. What do you what do you make of them four call outs, Andy? What's your opinion on that? Um, I think he beats two of them. Yeah, and gets beat by the other two. I think I think Crawford would turn them inside out. I think uh, Canelo would probably batter him, but I think he'd beat Ben. I think he'd batter Ben, and I think he would. Who was the other one? Sorry, Saunders. Saunders, I think he'd beat Saunders. Yeah, Saunders has been away too long, hasn't he? I thought he was lucky. I thought he'd beat himself in that fight against Saunders, the first fight. I thought he did nothing for the first six rounds and he was playing catch-up. And by the end of the fight, he was putting a beat down on Saunders, I felt. If I remember right, it's a long time ago. Eh? Must be about 10 years ago, wasn't it? Watch were putting a beat down on Andre Ward the last few, few rounds, though, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah. You've got to time it right, haven't you? Nah. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be... Too late to catch up, eh? And it's uh, aye. Like Big Joe Joyce, eh? When he was fighting uh, Chisora, he was trying to catch up. Then he got dropped, eh? So, <laughs> no chance of catching up then, is there? Billy Joe but, can uh, fight though. I don't, I always felt that. Nah, he's a good fighter, Billy Joe Saunders. But it's just the fact he's been away too long for me that he's he put him at. Uh, mm. He didn't fail that Billy Joe didn't know not about that dope test he got done for you know. I didn't know much about that. No, what was, what was the story with that? It's not for me to tell, but 
we can't accuse Billy Joe of that because all hell broke loose after that. So it's for Billy to come out and tell the story, but all yeah. hell broke loose. So you read, I think people more or less know what went on. We know that Tony Bellew's been asked it with flex, don't we, over it? Yeah. So I'm I'm team Billy on that now about the story. Yeah. That's why nobody wants to go up there and train at the Ingle Lab. But uh-huh. I know, Billy Joe and Eubank, they fought 10 years ago, didn't they, right? That's been talked about for 10 years, that now. It's all that. Yeah. So why is Eubank revisiting that? Why is he not chasing Charlo? Uh, it's just money, isn't it? It's just money, right? I think they're both... They're both wasted talents, really, aren't they? They've messed about too much or no fought often enough. It's, it's, both their careers have stagnated. And in, in activities, you know yourselves, that I think is the worst enemy of the boxer, isn't it? Well, Saunders won't act, he won't he? Eubank won't act, he? Nah. This is how I look at it, right? When I when I first used to start, start texting Frotch, first time I got his number was about 17 years ago. I followed him since he turned pro. And he always used to say, I want to fight Joe Calzaghe. And I want to fight the best. I want to move up the ladder and keep fighting tough fights to make a name for himself, show people what he was about. That's what Carlo always used to say. And then I look at this generation now. They've got to hang... I'm not I'm not just saying it because he's, he's, he's a pal of mine and he's been raped with me. I look at this generation now, Andy, right? And I think, where's the next Carl Froch or Clinton Woods? Look at all them Clinton Woods for. Oh, I hear a lot of fighting in eras where they all got at it. Mm. Glenn Johnson trilogy, Clinton had, didn't he? What I think's happening now, though. Got him with Roy Jones that thought you what? What I think's happening now is Turkey Hour Shake. It's forcing the hand of people, the best, of to fight the best. Mm. And that's good. That's good in my eyes. Just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, and at the moment, you know, to be honest. So, I've got people around me, close friends and family, and they're like, Russell, can you just try and be a little bit more positive? I'm like, well, yeah. But how? So, I feel like saying, help me to help you. Give me some to go on. Yeah, give me some. This shows at that Wembley show. That's a fantastic show, isn't it? Joshua's show. Yeah. Josh Warrington on there. Dubar and Big Meech are going to go at it. That's a great show. The Saudi one, Liam Cameron's on there. Uh, Ben Whitaker. And all all other fights on there. Beat the Beaver. Bevel. 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 Mm. You know, top fights, see, that's the fights we need to be seeing. Uh... That's two shows, right? How many more have we had to cheer about last since I've been doing this channel? Come on, tell me. No, that many. I mean, that uh, that last show in uh, was it Los Angeles? That wasn't too bad. Eh? Uh, Bacoli against um, Jared uh, Jared Anderson, eh? and then you had. Miller against Ruiz. It wasn't as good a fight. I thought the Coley fight was a good fight. Yeah, but Andy, Probably. Andy, listen to me. Let me just stop you there. That's just the norm. That should be the standard. We should yeah. have, we shouldn't be raving about that show. I mean, somebody was raving to me in, in an email today about oh David Chisora and Dylan White trilogy. Come on, P, give it some big up. I went, what? That should hmm. just be the normal standard. How's that pay per view? How is that pay per view? Come on, Andy. You go back to the nineties. These kind of shows were happening every other week, weren't they? There you, go. there you go, mate. They were happening all the time. But hmm. now, when we get something like McCauley and Jared Anderson, we all start losing our minds, don't we? It's because there's been a famine. Eh? There's been a famine of fights. Say, it's just not been happening. And then when like the big ones do happen, it's wow. It's a, there's a wow factor where there shouldn't really be a wow factor. It should be an acceptable 
quality card, we might say. Yeah. People say to me, come on, give me something positive. So help me to help you. You'll give me something positive. I started this channel. I've been with Dennis two and a half years. And he's like, we need to get fighters out there. They're not selling no tickets, Liam Cameron and all the rest of them. Sheedy. They weren't doing tickets. That's how I ended up starting this channel. Me and Rico started it. And I didn't even know how to work a computer. And I'm thinking to myself, well, they had, they had Joshua and Vladimir, didn't they? April 2017. I started this November 17. Go look at my first video. If you, if you can clearly if you go on all thing, it'll tell you, take you to the first ever video. And I swear to God, we were promised the world after that show. We were promised the winner got wilder. Mm -hmm. Vladimir lost. Joshua went nowhere near wilder. I was seven years ago. They flew Wilder in first class, put him up in Hilton International at Wembley. Oh, Wilder's going to fight Joshua next. What happened? What happened, Eddie? Oh, yeah. I'm having a go at Eddie Ernie. I'm not calling him Eddie Hills. I'm going to be nice for this month. What happened? Why say it? Then we had the Joshua Fury. We're a done deal. Thank you very much, Daniel Kinahan. It's a done deal. We had all that, didn't we? All that, 2019, 2020? Yeah. We're coming to end, it's 2025 in three months, three or four months. Mm. Nowhere near, is it? So, Do you think if the Saudis had come on board back then, we'd be in a totally different place to what we are now? Of course they would. These mm. promoters would have worked with them because they get the line in their pockets, aren't they? Mm. I just think it's in bad taste. It's conning the fans, eh? Hey? It's conning the fans, isn't it? People that are passionate about the sport and want to just want to see it do well, eh, and see it thrive. And then you get folk, folk will just, like you say about your analytics, it's folk fading away. The majority of people watching boxing is probably our age, and youngsters are, they'll watch the influencers and all that rubbish. Now, that's no real, and that's where somebody's going to get really hurt in some of the shows, that, eh? Misfits and all that. You see some of the stuff going on there, that's, it's just wrong, isn't it? It's just like uh, you can see it coming in. Somebody's going to get hurt. Oh, I've seen yeah. it's a while since I've watched one, but the last one I've seen there was some guy with no defense, his head's getting flipped about side to side, and should have been stopped there, eh, regardless of what was going on. But the ref's just letting it go on as well. Eh? And it's like, oh, right. somebody's going to get hurt, mate. Proper, you can't play at boxing now, it's not a game. That's uh. So I, I just want to know who from this next generation is going to get stuck in this Ben Whitaker who they're all raving about, yeah? Is he going to go on like a frock to run? Nah. No. I don't think he's got, I don't think he's got the power, Ross. Hmm? I don't think he's got enough power. He's hard enough to knock us out, yeah. Oh, I, I. But... Uh... Who's going to go on a run, Brian, Andy? Who's going to go on a run? Sorry for cutting you short. Oh, Brian McGee, Robin Reed, uh, Jean Pascal, uh, Andre Dirrell, Jermaine Taylor, Kessler, Arthur Abraham, Glenn Johnson, Ward, Andre Ward, Bote, you know, people like that, Groves twice. It was, it was I mean, you see, Martin can throw him in there. They said that were a gimme fight. It were IBF number five. Who's going to go on a run like that? Roadman killers, you know, over a period of, what's, over a period of about seven, eight years, who's going to go on a run like that from this from this generation? Who? Who's going to do The only that? person, there's only one person I can think of who looks like he could maybe do something like that is Moses Atuma. Yeah, Moses Atuma. And then, but he could he could end up getting cut down like cheddar cheese, couldn't he? In the next twelve months, if they match him wrongly, if they match him, match wrong. him he's kind of at a critical point of being matched, isn't he? He's got to, he's got to go careful. Oh, who's he beat what? so far? Who's he beat so far that Fabio Wardley or Fraser Clark wouldn't beat? No one has he. No one yet, no. But then he, they, they should be further further on than him, bro. Yeah, yeah. He's he's young. 
so they're raving about him. But Mike Tyson was young, but he was burnt out at 23. Mm. Mike Tyson was finished at 23, wasn't he, basically? He was That's a rescue, but, but then he was... Uh... <laughs> Also, yeah, I suppose he had personal issues there. If he's, well, if he's looked not, after right. properly and that, but Tyson was also a short fighter, wasn't he? And once his skills go, he's a short, a short guy with short arms, isn't he? But and that's what he'll get out of box, wasn't he? Well, once that speed went, he went knackered, wasn't he? Really? Ah. And the body head movement and all that, but that just he, become, none, did he? he didn't nah. have none of that against Buster Douglas because he, he burnt himself out. He were all burnt, he were all washed up at 23. You know that, yeah. I know that, he knows that. Yeah. All the rest of it was just fear. Once that one Buster Douglas exposed him, nobody were fritting yeah. him, were they? So Holyfield got stuck in him, didn't he? He when didn't he knocked about by Kevin McBride. There you go. He just gave up now, fight, didn't he? he had no fighting him, didn't he? Well, they got two million quid to sit on his stool, didn't he? He won't bother, but he mm. just wanted out. And remember, he fought a guy, uh, what was it? Was he Danish or Dutch guy? Uh, oh, what was his name? Brian Nielsen. Oh he, was almost, he was almost giving up in that fight. Yeah, he found a big punch and it was at the seventh round, but it was like he was almost giving up. I and mean, that fight against Francois Bota, he was getting head jabbed off in that. He was just lucky he got a big he punch. Got out of jail again in that one, didn't he? But the Bri Brian Nielsen, I thought you were going to say Brian Cockrell then. <laughs> like, that professional liar from up north. <laughs> Brian Cockrell, right, how many lies have you told today, you? Group <laughs> rally driver. He, what, what else did he say? He took a chase. He's only man at North East to be chased by helicopters and T5 police Volvos, roadblocks and lot. Coppers running in love with dogs for him. They were like John Rambo. He ran into the woods, didn't he? <laughs> Where does the thing come up in? Big arm robber, self-confessed murderer, hitman, gangland enforcer, Brian Cockrell. <laughs> Where does he dig him up from him? Have you seen rubbish he comes out with him? On YouTube, what I remember seeing a program. That? Gangland enforcer, do me, Bri, do me a favour. <laughs> he's got to that stand up. Come, he's a stand up comedian. Got to be. Yeah. That can't be real life. That can it. He was on that with McIntyre years and years ago. I remember seeing him on that McIntyre. What are they were on? What are them? That Donald. You see him stood Donald there in the street with his mates. They were cruising about in an Enridge Mondeo. <laughs> With Lonsdale tracksuits on and vests. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my pal, but you know, Big Shane from all, we were looking at it. <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, uh, so don't you think there's going to be anybody apart from Matt Moses that's going to go on like a frotch type run? In this country, I mean, how do you think Hamza Shiraz is going to get on? No, I don't rate him, mate. He'll get cut down like yeah. a vet chair him. He'll get folded Thanks. like a deck chair. He's too lanky to be able to do out. You don't have uh, to put three middleweights, do you? He'd have to move up weight, probably, yeah, to I've fill out his frame. Eh? But... All right, then look at it like this. Who's Amzad Shearer beat the Eubank won't beat? And I don't rate him. Or Liam Smith. Nah. Nobody. I was hoping. I was hoping he was going to fight you, Banks. So that'd be a decent matchup, be fairly level over it. Sort of. People lose their minds when they get some to get to twenty and oh, Everybody starts going. Woo! Do you remember him, Georgie Collins? George. Do you remember him, Georgie Collins? Oh, oh, brick, brick tops, brick top. Come out in an interview and he said Georgie Collins was the best fighter that he's ever been involved with in his 40, 40 odd year promotional career. Right. You remember that? I don't mind that. Do you remember him, Andy? Georgie Collins. See, he's that good. He's gone under the radar. People like Mark Tibbs remember him. Hang on a minute. Ah. Let me find this. Maybe well, not. See him, eh? Kirtland Lang done him. Right, hang on. George Collins. George Collins. I'm sure Kirtland Lang and Colin Jones done him. Could be wrong. George Collins, right? No. Uh... -huh. uh from Yately, Hampshire, birthplace, Surrey. Uh, 35 and 2, 24 Y way of on Button Moon. Yeah, no, Gary Jacobs done him, then Kirtland Lang. It wasn't Colin Jones. Colin Jones done Lang, didn't he? Gary Jacobs beat him on points, and then uh, 
Kurt Lang, but he was, he was 35 and 0 at the time. And it was all, it was all over for him in November 1989. Well, he were the first guy that Bricktop fell in love with. Isn't that right, Bricktop? Uh-huh. George Collins, or Georgie Collins, as they call him, was the first guy that Bricktop fell in love with. That's a true story, that, mate. Ask any Daddy. of them. Jim, Jim McDonnell, Jimmy Tibbs, Frank Bruno, Curtin Lang, any of them from that era, Mark Tibbs, everybody go and look at him. George Collins against Jerry, Gary Jacobs. Look at the hype around that guy there. Bricktop, proud as punch about him, wasn't he? Bricktop never fell in love with a fighter ever again after George Collins. And that is a true story. And you could take that to the bank. And you know what? Dennis used to say that to me. He used to say, never fall in love with a fighter. I said, why, well, says Cost, they'll let you down. And, and and they always do, don't they? Unless you've got like, you know, a Calzaghi or a Frotch or an Amir Khan or, a, you know, your top ones, Naz and them, Kel Brook, yeah. and sort of guys. Clinton Woods, all them, you know, top guys. But Bricktop, I don't know who, who'd fed him all that, but he was 35 and on. I was reading the other day some of the stuff in Boxing News from back in the day. Oh, Bricktop used to rave about Georgie Collins. Uh, Gary Jacobs was a decent fighter back in the day, wasn't he? He was well, so cool. Gar- Gary Jacobs were getting no favours on that show, let me tell you. Uh, yeah. We're getting no favours on that show. But uh, yeah, he fought. He fought Pernell Whitaker, I think Gary Jacobs, didn't he? Hey, yeah. he, I remember he fought Pernell Whitaker, didn't he? Jacobs, mm. good fight. Forty-five, though. forty-five wins, eight losses. Oh, Gary Jacobs. Yeah, he was oh, uh, Pernell Whitaker. Uh, unanimous hey. decision. He lost it. Yeah, they fought for. Commonwealth in uh, at Royal Albert Hall when that went main place. It was a Mike Barrett show. And Georgie Collins was a way fighter. So Bricktop basically would have uh, had him on that to do to do Mike Barrett's guy and he got done. He got done. done he brought, brought him back, didn't he, against Kirtland Lang. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. That's, mm. that's just boxing for you, isn't it, mate? Yeah. That's boxing that's for you. It. And then Kurt Lang iced him in fifth round, didn't he? On a brick top show. Uh, that brick was top, the end. That was the end. That was, that was all over. British title, but British welterweight title, Kurt Lang done him. But uh, Georgie Collins. Crazy. So he was getting a, crazy, he, that, he isn't it? A, that crazy. So he was getting a British title shot off after a defeat. After the defeat, yeah. It just shows you what happened, doesn't it? Mm, that was going on then as well. Well, they obviously didn't stick to Green Book, did they, in them days? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, look at Tommy Frank. He got one. Dennis got him one after two losses, didn't he? Technically four. It was because he had two gifts <laughs> when I were there. Look, <laughs> rules in boxing, they don't mean a thing. Contracts, they don't mean a thing. Don't yeah, what, don't... what do the contracts mean? They don't just, mean uh... Promoters run get, get manipulated to suit him. That's it. Yeah, you want to go on the part? Let's try and be positive or you get me told off. You want to go on to part two? Want to go on to part two, kid? Pop, pop, bang. Thanks Good for man. liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. We'll go on to part two and you know what? We're going to get in close. Pop, pop, poppity pop.